1986, okay, so this is my grade seven graduation. This is a very typical look as a kid. Lyndall Montgomery is going public for the first time about alleged sexual abuse she suffered as a teen. Here I am at 12, starting to get pimply. It happened inside an insular and secretive Christian sect that has no official name, but is most commonly referred to as the two by twos. But no makeup, no jewelry, no hair cutting. After a certain age, you're expected to put your hair up into a bun um, and pulled back. That's, That's the look. quite typical. That's the look, exactly. Montgomery says there was violence in her home growing up, and at age 14, after a particularly traumatic incident, she was sent to live with Leanne McChesney, a two-by-two -two minister, or worker, as they're called in the faith. My Frank Hurt go-card from 1988-89, right around the time when Leanne would have entered my world. While in her care, Montgomery says McChesney sexually abused her. How I ended up with Leanne is a million dollar question. I can't answer that, I wish I could. That might bring me some sort of clarity as well. Did anyone know what was going on in 1989? Did the church know, did your parents know, did any adult in your life know? For me personally, I can't say. If they did, they didn't do anything. Yeah, my parents had implicit trust in the organization, in the workers, in the way it all, yeah, just in all, in all of it. They are truly believe it's the one true way. Where's this one? You ready? Yeah. Thank you. Ready? Montgomery lived with the secret for 35 years until last year when she saw this news story. I looked at the page, front page of our Comox Valley record here, and on it was a story of one of the workers who had been charged with child pornography. And they actually went into quite a bit of detail about the two-by-twos. So it was undoubtedly they were talking about, and it just blew my mind. Montgomery brought her story to authorities early last year. In January of this year, police from the community of Delta arrested McChesney on charges of sexual assault and sexual exploitation. None of the allegations have been proven. The charges come amid a number of international media reports about child sexual abuse within the two-by-twos. A few weeks ago, the FBI took the uncommon step of publicly announcing it was investigating the two-by-twos in the United States, asking for help identifying victims of a religious group that traditionally has not had a name, but has been referred to outside the group as the two-by-two, -two, the way, the truth, and the church with no name. That's in the States. Yeah. Well, would you like to see something similar in Canada? Very much so. Yeah, it's an international crisis. And so ask me now, why did it take me 36 years to do it? Because I know the difference between revenge and healing. I want to heal. I want to heal. That's my motivation for doing it. The two-by-twos were founded in Ireland in the 19th century by Scotsman William Irvine. Followers brought the faith to Canada in the early 1900s. The sect does not promote itself publicly. Sermons are most often held in members' homes. But we visited a public gospel meeting at this funeral chapel, hoping to speak to a minister about the allegations. We were invited in, but without our camera. The minister we spoke to declined comment. They're really off the radar in many ways because they don't own buildings, they don't own structures. Steve Kent is a professor emeritus at the University of Alberta who studies alternative and controversial religions. Many groups have antagonistic attitudes toward the outside secular world. The outside secular world is evil, fallen, uh, even uh, satanic, and consequently they almost never go uh, to outside authorities to report uh, incidents of abuse. What often happens is groups have either in, internal investigative procedures that are very, very poor, or they get uh, their uh, the abusers to, to repent. that say they had a conversation with God and God ha has forgiven them. When you heard the FBI was investigating the two by twos and asking victims to come forward, what did you think? Well, my very first reaction was, it didn't have to come to this. There's been plenty of warnings over the years. 
Okay, so this is our landing page for our Wings for Truth. 2x2's member Bruce Murdoch runs a website from his Cranbrook, B.C. home and has been posting about child sexual abuse cases within the church for over a decade. There are hundreds and hundreds of allegations that have not gone to, uh, to, to the legal authorities. And for many, many years, the leadership of the church would not go to the authorities on purpose. And so all this conspires to hold things back and hold progress back. And um, it had to come to this. Meanwhile, organizers of a 2x2 victims hotline in the U.S. tell us they have documented 1,500 unconfirmed allegations of sexual abuse and other offenses. I want to bring publicity to the fact that I am not an only. Over 700 perpetrators have been named. Over 1,500 allegations have been made, naming perpetrators more than once. Come here, goose! I feel fortified, finally that I'm not screaming in the wind anymore. And Karen, you've heard from the leader of the group in BC. Ian, his name is Merlin Affleck, and he declined our request for an interview and didn't answer questions we sent about McChesney's arrest or her status within the church or even the FBI investigation. What he did say is that steps are being taken within the church to protect children, including the development of a minister's code of conduct and a child safe policy. And as you mentioned in the story, you, you went to uh, a gospel meeting last Sunday. Right, so this would be like a sermon, and this was a public event. It was held at a Port Coquitlam funeral home. We were invited in, not with our cameras, uh, for the sermon. We attended for, I attended for an hour, but in the end, the minister in charge declined our request to be interviewed. Karen Larson in our Vancouver newsroom.